guys today i'm going to review a hammer house of horror episode and this one's called children of the full moon hammer house of horror children of the full moon was broadcast on the 1st of november 1980 it's the eighth episode of 13 that Hammer House of Horror did. It was directed by Tom Clegg. He also directed another episode, episode 5, The House That Bled to Death. It was written by Mary Smith. It runs 52 minutes. Christopher Kaznoff also was in another episode, Hammer House of Mystery and Suspense, In Possession. Children of the Full Moon stars Celia Gregory, Christopher Kaznoff, Diana Dawes and Robert Urquhart. Robert Urquhart was also in The Curse of Frankenstein in 1957. So this one involves werewolves. So it's a traditional hammer horror type of story using a, a famous monster type of figure, the werewolf. And the only did this once before in The Curse of the Werewolf from 1961 starring Oliver Reed. Why did hammer films only make one werewolf film feel? They had a lot of trouble with the curse of the werewolf, a lot of censorship problems, so it must have put Hammer off doing another werewolf story. So the episode starts off with a great scene where this little girl, you see the back of her, and she's eating something. And as the camera focuses on her, she turns around and her mouth's all blood, and she's been eating this lamb. So you see some ghosts straight away and it kind of gets you into the mood of the, the episode. And this is followed by the brilliant music and title sequence. So the story is sort of split into two sections. The first act's about the the couple having a... The, the car breaks down, the brakes go. And it's quite a well, um, well directed scene there actually. There's quite a lot of tension. Wondering is he going to crash? So because the car's knackered... They've got to find a phone. So they visit this place, this deserted house. And the housekeeper's Diana Dawes. So I thought she was really good in this episode. She's really sinister. And she's like the nanny of all these children who were werewolves. So there's a lot of tension in the scenes at the beginning where there's like no one looks between her and the children. Eventually the wife opens the curtains and she sees the face of a werewolf. That's quite a shock. What is it? She gets attacked and raped by the werewolf and the husband falls from a drain pipe and gets knocked out. And when he recovers, he's told that he imagined what happened. That it was all a part of a dream while he was unconscious. No, no there, there was this house in the woods. And a woman. I think he must still be concussed. I must have dreamt it. How extraordinary. Dreamt what? Oh, it's crazy. But there was this family of werewolves. In the finals where he decides he'll go and find the house because his wife's took off to have a baby in the house. And he discovers this woodsman who was actually the werewolf. So it's a great ending. So this story is all about location. The part of the story based in the city where the couple live, that's sort of realistic, set in reality. But the parts of the story set in this deserted village where the house is, it turns into sort of like a fairy tale, fantasy sort of storyline. So it's clever how they've split it between reality and fantasy. I think the star of this is um, the actress Diana Dawes. She was really good. And the camera focuses on her face a lot. I, I don't know if she was wearing pointy teeth at times or if it was just my imagination. Because I was showing her, I saw she had large K9 teeth at some scenes. For me, the best part was the actual ending though, where he discovers the woodsman with an axe and he slowly transforms into a werewolf. And it's actually quite good makeup for a, a TV show. So Celia Gregory, the actress who stars in it, she has two personalities. At the beginning of the story, before she gets attacked by the werewolf, she's like a normal type of personality. But afterwards, her personality changes. She has a taste for raw meat. So you see scenes where 
she's eating raw I think it's raw liver it's quite uh, disgusting actually because she did it for real putting it in her mouth thin raw strips of fillet darling it's delicious bloody hell she must have been peered a lot to put that in a gob it's like the bloody lasses round Newcastle <laughs> Her appetite for sex, she suddenly becomes wild for it. Let's go to bed. Yes! Yes. Hmm? Here. Yeah. Do it here. Bloody hell, Phil, he's a lucky bugger. Having a bloody sex mad wife like her. If I was him, I'd never be out the fucking house. <laughs> I thought Christopher Kasnoff was good as well as the male lead. You felt sorry for his character, a likeable character, and it's good where he's not sure if he imagined the beginning of the story. He's being told that he, he dreamt it, but he's not sure. Uh, recurring nightmare, didn't you? What was that? You'd laugh. Oh, no, I wouldn't. You've probably forgotten all about it. I mean, that's the way of dreams, isn't it? They're as clear as anything in the morning, and then tea, two boiled eggs, and bingo, you can't remember a damn thing about it. Wrong. I can remember every detail. Every second of every minute. So Tom Clegg directed a fast paced story. There's no slow parts in this. And he's quite a good director. I, I like the film Sweeney too that he did in 1978. He's done some um, episodes of the Sweeney. He also did The House That Bled to Death, episode 5, A Ham House of Horror. That's quite a good episode as well. So he's a good director. So overall, I thought this was one of the better ones. There was loads of tension in the house uh, with the children, the character Diana Dawes is playing, and you just get a sense that something nasty is going to happen all throughout the story. So I think out of ten I'd give this one a nine. Nine out of ten. But I didn't think Bones didn't like it. I thought it was excellent, Phil. Top marks. Okay, everybody, bye. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye.